Beat School on RealAirCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Hey, so we're back here with Mitchell Jap, and we are talking still about seed treatments and, and disease, but also about a few other things. Uh, why is it important for us to treat our wheat seed? Well, treating wheat seed is, a, is an important insurance step, I think, that you can take, if, particularly if you have seed that is a, a little bit questionable, or if you're seeding into conditions that are a little bit questionable. For example, if, uh, if you're trying to get out there early in the spring, get a head start on, on seeding, you might be seeding into a cool, wet soil, and that seed's going to sit there a little bit longer, and it's going to have more chance to get exposed to some of the diseases that can uh, be in the soil or on the seed, and have, for them to, to work on the seed before they uh, really get up and get going and so that is a really good example where a seed treatment would be uh, would be worthwhile and uh, another one is if you've done your seed test back and you know that there's a little bit of disease in there um, but it can be potentially uh, handled with uh, with a seed treatment um, with fusarium for example we talk about fusarium graminearum which is one specific species of um, of a uh, fusarium and if you get anywhere up above five percent uh, just don't de just don't seed that seed but even below that um, definitely apply a seed treatment that is uh, registered for, uh, for fusarium uh, graminearum if there's no graminearum present uh, up to about five percent you should probably okay but in a seed treatment it might be a worthwhile investment anyway and if you're above five percent Again, no graminearum present, uh, definitely apply a seed treatment to that. But there, there are other things that we have to worry about with wheat, it's not just disease? Yeah, for sure. Um, it, there's insects as well, particularly at the seedling stage where a seed treatment is going to be uh, effective would be uh, wireworms. And we're getting close to the season now where it might be worthwhile for you to go out and bait uh, wireworms. Uh, there's research today in Canada where they're actually requesting producers to put out a bait station and uh, collect that and then ship it off to them. But really you can put that bait out and basic, uh, basically you want some uh, bran or something like that uh, into, into a ball with maybe some milk or something, put it into the ground and uh, leave it there for maybe a week or so, go back and check and see what kind of activity you have. We don't know thresholds uh, where there's an economic threshold where you apply a, a seed treatment that has a effectiveness on, on wireworms, but you get an idea of what the threat might be. So whether you're uh, dealing with disease or insects, you deal with it as a single action or a dual action um, uh, seed treatment. How do we know which seed treatment to pick and, and what rate to put it on? Well, the, the seed treatment, uh, you, you can get an idea of what uh, you need from, uh, from the Guide to Crop Protection. Um, between different brands, we don't necessarily consider it, as long as it's registered for the pest that you're dealing with and uh, for the crop that you're putting it on, it, what matters is the coverage that you're getting, uh, more so than what the brand is. The rates, uh, again, uh, go back to the Guide to Crop Protection. and depending on what the, the pressure is you're dealing with and the product, it'll t uh, give you what the recommended uh, or approved rates are. With, uh, with winter wheat, uh, Dr. Brian Barris uh, led a project that uh, part of it looked at uh, different, uh, different agronomic strengths, I guess you would say, uh, and whether or not a seed treatment was, uh, was useful. And what he found, uh, and this, this project was on, uh, was on winter wheat, was that if the Ag agronomics were poor, which was small seed size, low seeding rate, there was a definite advantage to applying a seed treatment. It, it showed time and again that it improved yield, it improved the stand, and, and uh, stabilized the yield as well. Um, for the, using good agronomics, um, then it found that there was it wasn't as much of a benefit, but it was still uh, still might be worthwhile in some situations. And with with the seed treatment, he found that it helped to stabilize yields. Yeah, so we'd probably see the same thing in spring wheat, anyways. Right? Well, well, actually, we uh, we had an adopt project that was funded through the Ministry of Agriculture out at the 
uh, Wheatland Conservation Area last summer, they looked at Dr. Bear's research and applied that to spring wheat in Durham. And they took the same principles and they found very similar results. Uh, so, so we know that we should treat our seed. Uh, there are a few different options available. If we don't have an on-farm treater, we can get it custom done. Yep. Right? Um, how do we know, if we're getting it custom done, probably the coverage is good, but if we're doing it ourselves, can we just assess that visually and how can we change it? Oh, for sure, yeah. So we have an example here of some uh, wheat, uh, this is a hard white wheat that has, uh, has been treated, and this is an example of poor coverage. and. If you take a look at the seed, uh, whether on the visual here or on your farm, what you're looking for is good uniform coverage. And in this example, we can see some pink uh, seeds, but also there's a lot where it's either spotty application of the, of the seed treatment or there's just absence on some, some of the seeds themselves. And so those seeds aren't going to be protected. <clears throat> what you're looking for is, uh, as I mentioned, good uniform coverage where it's uniform on each kernel but also uh, th throughout the, the seed lot. Um, so the keys to good, good seed treatment application is to know your, the rate of your product that is going on and to the rate of your, your seed that is flowing through. So if you're uh, applying that, that seed treatment uh, with an on-farm seed treater, um, you know, set the rate uh, and make sure you've measured and calibrated both the rate of the, of the treatment and or the grain. And for the grain uh, that's coming uh, either from a truck or a bin, you want to make sure that the, the, the source of the seed isn't limiting the flow of the auger. So you want the auger running, uh, running full. So that auger provides secondary mixing and that's really important uh, to get that, uh, that seed treatment mixed thoroughly. Yeah, if you know your calibration rate is both right for the seed, the rate of the seed and the rate of the, the treatment, um, if the seed treatment you're using is water soluble, you can add some water to that to, to help uh, spread that treatment out a little bit more. And another trick that I've heard is if you make it so your auger is running steeper, uh, at a higher incline, uh, then it promotes some of the seed falling back in inside the auger and, and further stretches out that secondary mixing stage. Mm -hmm.